from Peter Brackley, welcome to Montevideo. Where tonight in the Centenario Stadium, the unlikely may be about to happen. If Uruguay don't win tonight, then Bolivia here, hardly recognized as a major force in world football, they will be on their way to the final stages of the World Cup for the first time since 1950. Uruguay finalists in the South American Championships this year. They began as firm favorites to witness three-team group. Peru, of course, the other country involved. But that defeat in La Paz has suddenly made life far more awkward than Uruguay would have anticipated. And the stark reality of the situation now is that if Uruguay uh, don't win tonight, well, then they are out of the competition. They can only qualify by winning their remaining games, this one, and then next week, at home to Peru. Some of the uh, news at last coming through on the teams, and there we have the Bolivian lineup. Truco, who was the reserve goalkeeper in the earlier group matches, keeps his place in goal there. Martinez, Ferrufino, the uh, two central defenders, and Fontana, another key man at the back. Borja is back in the side, I see there. Romero, he was outstanding last week against Peru, number 10, and Romero playing up front. So the Bolivians sticking uh, much to the same format for the last two or three games in this group. As we await news of the, uh, or confirmation anyway, of the Uruguayan lineup, we've had an advance the team, and it is the same team that they've featured throughout the group games. Pereira still in goal. Number nine there, Francesco Lee. Well, Don Howe, the England coach, is alongside me again in the commentary box. Don, who, unlike me, was very much alive in 1950 when they last qualified Bolivia. Can it happen, Don? Can the unlikely happen? Well, why not? Uh, I mean, that was a, it was a super performance against Peru last week that the Bolivians put in. Uh, and they do have this kind of altitude advantage. I mean, uh, they get it both ways. I mean, when, for instance, when Uruguay went to La Paz, they had to go up to altitude. I don't think they had time to acclimatize, so they would find that difficult. Now the Bolivians have come down to sea level. For the first few days, I mean, they're gonna be in, in super, super condition. And against Peru, I mean, the, the work rate of the Bol Bolivian team was absolutely fantastic. Their closing down on the Peruvians was absolutely magnificent. And they did it for 90 minutes. So they have got this advantage on fitness. What I would say is, obviously, is all the experiences on the Uruguayan team. I mean, they've got so many outstanding players, Paz, Francescoli, Alzamendi, Sosa, that uh, if you said to me, well, who's going to win this one, I would go for Uruguay. But the confidence of Bolivia will certainly be extremely high over those three wins in a row, two at home and one away in Lima. There are the results that Uruguay have had so far. Pretty comfortable start, 2-0 uh, against Peru in Lima, then the defeat in La Paz. So their remaining games, this one today, and then the final match for them at home to Peru, and you would expect them to win that. Peru have been very disappointing in the group games so far. Romero there, number 10, Romalo up front, one of their goal scorers in the group games so far, and here are the results then from Bolivia, all 2-1 at home to Peru, off to a fine start. Even better against Uruguay, and then last week, a 2-1 win away in Peru. Bolivia going ahead just before half-time. Peru coming back to equalise, but then the winner for Bolivia from their substitute, Sanchez, in the second half. The referee there, Ramon Castro. It's going to be uh, a very tricky match, I think, for Uruguay, with Bolivia having come through these first three games so well. But as Don Howe is saying, Uruguay will be favourites to win. And what looks to be a very, very big crowd are going to be very disappointed if they don't. Well, the, the game also, Peter, is that uh, this referee is always important, as they are in South America anyway. And uh, we know the, the uh, reputation of the Uruguayans. I mean, they can be a very, very tough team. Uh, and it needs a good referee in there. Uh, if he can get in there and he can stamp on, his, on the little problems that happen in the first 20 minutes, then we'll have a good football match. It's Bolivia then, who are about to kick off, attacking the goal to our right in the first half. Bolivia in the green shirts, white shorts, Uruguay in their pale blue and dark shorts, and away they go. 
Just to recap, Uruguay have to win this game to stay in contention. A draw will be enough to take Bolivia through to the finals. So everything on this game here. Dominguez playing it through. Montano, who got the first goal for Bolivia. That's a very nervous mistake in the opening minute here from Uruguay. Just matching there, Montano, the goal scorer, number 23. He's in the starting lineup for Bolivia. Francesco Lee going down. The first foul of the game on him. Kabir again, Peter. I mean, the uh, straight away there was there was the ball, the long ball up from the back uh, for the Bolivians into the Uruguayan half. Straight away they get people in there to support the ball and also to close the players down. They are prepared to fight the battle in the, Ur the Uruguayan half. This is Herrera. Rather aimlessly for though by Herrera. The goal kick to Bolivia. No, in fact, the referee has held up play for a free kick to Uruguay, which Herrera will take for them. So, sir. It's Gutierrez. Rather clumsily done, but he got away with it. Ruben Paz. Francesco Lee. For once, the marking wasn't too tight on him. They also moved out very well there, the Bolivians. I mean, they are a well-organized team. I mean, first of all, they were denying most of the Uruguayans' uh, players, especially the man on the ball, obviously. They're denying them to let the ball be played forward, and when they did play the ball forward at the end of their move, they moved out just outside the box to play offside. Trucco is keeping goal for them. There he is, Carlos Trucco. Natalie attired once again in this rather jazzy sweater, which we were admiring last week in the game against Peru. This is Romero. A lot revolves around Romero, as it does for well, the number 10 of Uruguay, Paz, so it's going to be a fascinating confrontation in midfield. But can't believe he hold this man Sosa, so dangerous up front. Francesco Lee, immediately surrounded by green shirts, down he goes. And you lose count of the number of times that Francesco Lee is fouled in a game. He's such a hard man to contain. Very few teams rely on one defender to hold him. Well, they'll be very uh, obviously the Bolivians will be very aware of his ability to uh, control a game. And when he gets the ball, as was there, you know, there'll be one or two uh, defenders kind of queuing up to make sure that uh, you know he can't get his game going he, and he can't hit the type of passes that could hurt them. So a free kick to Uruguay. And the referee, I think, wanting that wall further back. No, he's happy now. Easy save for Chaco. The Bolivians will look to catch Uruguay on the break. I don't think they'll commit too many players forward. This is Dominguez. Offside. When that ball does go forward into the Uruguayan half, they're pushing out, though, uh, Peter. You know, I mean, it's 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 basically up to one man. But as soon as he goes there, the rest of the the, the nine other outfield players uh, are pushing up there and and leaving the Uruguayans in their own half offside. Yes, Romalo is the man right up front. Pena again isn't in the side. The man who scored both goals in the first game against Uruguay. We can only presume that he's injured or that they're just settling for one man up front. But Peña looked very sharp indeed in the first game in La Paz. But not in the starting lineup. Given away. And it's a rather edgy start from Uruguay. Pereira is the goalkeeper. 
Paz threading it through beautifully. Sosa. Well, the Bolivians had plenty of defenders back, but Sosa threatened to tear them apart then. He's such a skillful player. Foul by Podomo. Sosa wriggling away from one tackle and just pulling the ball back too far. They've got a terrific understanding, Paz and uh, Sosa. I mean, down this left side of the pitch. I mean, they, they, they play with two men forward uh, and wide. I mean, they virtually play without the centre forward, Uruguay. They've got Sosa on the left and they've got Alzamendi on the right. And, and players like Paz and Francesco Oli have got the, the room then to come in from midfield into that centre spot. Throw to Bolivia. Maximum points so far from three games, and I don't think anyone expected that from them. They've been so often the poor relations of South American football, and they didn't fare too well in the South American Championships either, and in fact were beaten 3-0 by Uruguay. This is De Leon. Now to Ostalaza. Two teammates from Nacional. One of the big clubs, of course, in Uruguay. Currently the World Club champions. But are we in for a major World Cup surprise here? Romero. Free kick to Uruguay. And it looks as if it's going to be a hard, uncompromising contest out there. Podomo. Number five for Uruguay in the thick of the action, as he's certain to be throughout the 90 minutes. So far, the Bolivian defence standing firm, but they're under some pressure here. Ferrofino failed to get it away. Ostalata, tall, gangling figure. But the Bolivians gone are fighting for everything. Well, they will. I mean, I mean, they are uh, they're super fit, and I think that's why they can keep it going. And uh, I mean, there's one or two of the Uruguayans who must be kind of well, six foot two, six foot three, but that's having no effect on them. I mean, they're going in and they're getting their, they're getting their tackles in. Uh, it's going to be a hell of a good game. Uruguay have set Gutierrez forward, number two. They have Francesco Lee in there too. Here's the corner. Has back in, hooked away, not too effectively though. A shot driven through and wide. I suppose that's where the danger could be because of the height of the Uruguayans. And Paz did a super, I mean, he got the cross in straight away. Uh, having chased the ball wide, he turned around and put the cross straight back in. And uh, this is where they could get in. So, goal kick to Bolivia, the match some ten minutes old. And the Bolivians on the defensive so far. Alzamendi. It's a chance. Lovely turn then from Paz. He's asking a lot of questions early on in this game, is Ruben Paz. Very influential in the midfield. The goalkeeper did very well there. He came out, he, he, he couldn't get all of it, but, but just the, the kind of the knock, the semi-punch away was enough to clear the danger. Free kick to Bolivia. This is Meljar. Scored from the penalty spot in the first win for Bolivia in the group against Peru. 2-1 at home. This is Romero. He's got a neat touch. But I don't think the Uruguayans will allow any time for Romero to settle. It's Montano there. The man who scored that first goal in the win in Peru last week. A 
22-man squad, we were told. He's wearing 23. You can work that one out for yourselves. Gave us a few problems last week, I can tell you. Stelaza. Uruguayans anxious to get on with it as swiftly as they can. Yes, they are. I mean, they're looking for an early goal, obviously. If Just they to can... settle them down. That's right. It will settle them down, and obviously it's the psychological battle uh, will be going their way. Of course, the longer it stays without a goal, the higher the confidence of the Bolivians will be. It's a good tackle, then, to deny Sosa. Montano making the tackle. This is Dominguez, who inadvertently slipped in the shot from Peña in the first game between the two teams in the group. Here's where there could be, have a few problems for the Bolivians, the height. There's a hell of a difference in height in the general build of the players. It's another corner then. Taken by Alzamendi. Another chance to cross it in. Trunko thought about coming for it. And he had to scamper back quickly. And he's down injured now. Well, the ball was bouncing around and there was a lot of feet in the air. I don't know whether he was caught in the face or... He started to go for it and then yeah, very well... bravely came out. Having well, there was a defender and the forward. Both went after the ball. Well, the referee is going to stand for no nonsense, so I don't think there's any question that uh, Traco was hurt then in the challenge. It's on the side of the face there, on the right side of his face. But after what happened with the Chilean goalkeeper, Rojas, recently, one does tend to suspect yes. something untoward. Well, they do play act, and also, obviously, at that stage of the game, to quieten things down and quieten the crowd down would be a good thing. All the attacking in the early stages is coming from Uruguay, as you'd expect, of course, the home side. They must win this one. And they've also got to beat Peru in the final game. And the way that Peru have been playing, I don't think that uh, will be too difficult for Uruguay, but this one certainly is. Another free kick. Tall figure of Gutierrez there, number two. Just moved to Salta Viga in Spain from Lazio in Italy. Another high ball for the Bolivians to deal with. Sosa. Haven't got it away. Well, they have now. But still, the pressure is on them. Here's Paz. Tantalizing cross again. Alcimendi couldn't keep it in, but he's got the throw anyway. Herrera. Alcimendi's cross. Oh, Sosa was lurking. Here's Paz. Romero. And they simply can't get the ball out of their own half. But they're holding on at the moment. Yes, and, and the Uruguayans, I mean, they're wasting no time getting their crosses in. I mean, Paz just sat on that one a little bit, that last one, but I think within a kind of a minute, they put in three crosses. And uh, it looks as though that's where they've done their homework. They're going to get that ball in the box, especially on crosses as often as they can. So, sir. Truco, who's in the side ahead of Galasa, who played in their earlier matches. And he did well in Peru, and he's not doing too badly today either so far. 
Melchar. Holding back for Dobo. And that'll earn him a ticking off from Ramon Castro, the referee. Whistles and jeers from this huge crowd in the Centenario Stadium in Montevideo. Nil-nil so far. Now, is that a penalty? No, nothing given. Just over a quarter of an hour gone in the first half. It's World Cup qualifying game. And if you are just tuning in, the scenario is that if Uruguay don't win, Bolivia will be through to the World Cup finals for the first time since 1950. Well, the protests weren't too vigorous then from Uruguay. They're pressing again now. Choco quickly out of his area, six-yard area, to thwart them once again. Well, that's, they're going to keep the pressure on now, the Uruguayans. I mean, this is their only way in. They're going to find out a weakness. Uh, they're going to get those crosses in. They're going to get people run with the ball in the box. I mean, that there was a, a, a pretty, uh, you know, say if there had been a, a pressure save another 10 minutes, the referee might have gone the Uruguayans way on that last penalty appeal. It's a fairly relentless siege on the Bolivian goal at the moment. Free kick to Uruguay, which Paz will take for them. There's another intelligent ball, and Chaco clashing, I think that's with Sosa. And that was a rather nasty bump between the two. Well, the, the goalkeeper did very well to start with because he read the through ball uh, in the back of the defenders down that left side and obviously he could only get there and then there was the collision with Sosa. Uh, I, I mean, here again he seems to be making a meal of it but it was a pretty fair bump. It's quite a battering between yeah. the two but again the vision of Paz to the fore with the free kick, the early ball, off goes Sosa and... Did take a bit of a whack then from the goalkeeper, Trucco. They're rather similar in style, Paz and Sosa, left-footed players, and yes. they link together so well. Yeah, well, uh, they're both kind of this South American build, you know, this kind of five-foot-eight, stocky build. You know, you see them on the pitch, uh, obviously Sosa plays more up front, Paz plays in midfield, but they have got terrific understanding. Sosa was the man of the tournament in the South American Championships, Uruguay losing to Brazil in the final, but Sosa was really outstanding, four goals from him too. And Paz, the playmaker in midfield. Paz, who's now with Genoa in Italy, Sosa with Lazio again. the strong man at the back alongside Gutierrez Dominguez that's one way to ease the pressure the goalkeeper seems to be holding his left thigh I don't know whether he's got a dead leg there or on that collision with uh, Sosa Certainly not looking too happy at the moment, but he's kept them out. And the Bolivian defence is taking a fair old hammering at the moment. A little bit of light relief here in the other end of the field, but not for long. Back it comes. Two changes in the Bolivian side, as I suggested earlier on, a Soria isn't playing, and we felt he was their outstanding player last week, you may remember, Don. The man who hit the post, and it seemed to be getting a lot of things going for them from midfield. Well, he's not in the team, so again, we can only assume there's an injury. But they have Borgia back, who missed that game. So there's a lot of experience in the Bolivian side.
well, what they were doing last week against Peru, they, they were the Bolivians, having, having won the ball, they were hitting these balls kind of angling them wide up to the flanks for the centre forward to run out wide and collect them, and then they were getting up to him and getting support in. That's their problem at the moment, they can't seem to get that ball into the areas where last week they were getting them. Romero. Sosa taking the throw quickly. Very strong challenge. It's Martinez, and that's going to be a yellow card. Well, I think it was working up to that. I mean, this must be about, uh, since the game started, that, that's about the six free kick around the box, you know, in, in the uh, Bolivian half. And the referee at some time has got to show his authority. Martinez, who plays for the club known as the strongest, and he was the meanest there. That was a pretty ferocious tackle. But a free kick to Uruguay, which Sosa will take. Two-man wall, which the referee will usher back a little further. Now, can Uruguay make this one count? Podomo. He's the anchor man in midfield, just slipping it through, and Trucco again spotting the danger. Well, it was offside to start with, but uh, as the defence are moving out, so Trucco comes out behind them. So anything that's going in the back of them, he's there to sweep things up. Uh, he's reading the through balls well, is Trucco. He, obviously, he's getting a few collisions <laughs> on the way through, but... Uh, He's doing his job well. I think he's going to have a few bruises after this one. But Bolivia won't mind that if they go on to the finals. And that is still a strong possibility. Romero. Francesco Lee. Now. Can Sosa finish it? Look how quickly those defenders measured the tackle. Well, they made a terrific recovery because it looked as though Sosa had, had, had got through on the offside trap. But uh, they recovered very quickly. They are, they are very fit and quick. De Leon, not much gets past him. Podomo. But they're showing that they're hard to break down, the Bolivians. They have Ferrofino, Martinez and Fontana at the back. They've all been around on the scene for a while. And behind them, this fellow Trucco is letting nobody down so far. And I can only presume that jersey is sponsored by somebody. Or he's perhaps wearing it for a bet. <laughs> anyway. Perhaps this is lucky charm. Well, it makes him very distinctive. <laughs> Francesco Lee goes down for the umpteenth time. I was reading today about the 1987 South American Championships, and in Uruguay's two matches, Francesco Lee was fouled 25 times. Oh, yes. Doesn't surprise you. Well, to hear that. obviously, he holds on to the ball a lot, and uh, I mean, he is one of the playmakers, and, and he does tend to attack defenders with the ball. Francesco Lee now, of course, with Marseille in France. Having moved from Racing Paris. Paz is there, Podomo. Podomo shot. Rather ambitious. A bit too far out, that one, I thought. Podomo, who's also now in Italy with Genoa. And that caused a little bit of unrest among the Uruguayan officials. There was some talk that he might not be available. Podomo, who was the captain of the Uruguayan side that won the South American Championships in 87. So he's a pretty important player for them. Dominguez. Melja for Bolivia. It's nil-nil. If it stays this way, Bolivia are through to the finals. There's a long way to go yet, though. That was a nice ball there, that was a nice diagonal ball for Alzamendi, and he's... Alzamendi's a good player. Uh, he, he doesn't get on the ball as much as Sosa in pass, but he makes runs from that kind of outside right spot towards the centre of the pitch, 
and he's he's uh, he times his run super. And he was he was quite unlucky there. A yellow card for Trucko. Time wasting. And if it stays at nil-nil, I think we'll see a fair bit of that in the second half. As Bolivia endeavour to keep out Uruguay. Trucco has received a yellow card, so he can't deliberate too long on these goal kicks, or he'll get a red button. Now he's claiming he's being attacked well, by he's, the he's, 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 Yes, that's right. I mean, it, it looks as though uh, you know, the crowd behind him are throwing... Uh, Whatever it is, and it's pretty much taking his goal kick. They were certainly throwing verbal abuse, but I didn't see anything else. But well, he was kind of shielding his his head as though uh, there were some kind of missiles coming through. Well, if Trucco decides to throw his jersey to the crowd afterwards, he may not get too yes. many takers. Anyway, it's another free kick. More defending for the Bolivians to do. Another chance for Uruguay. Heated arguments. Any difference. And the referee has just got to keep a tight grip on this situation. Just a little threat of it getting out of hand. The Bolivians clearly are so keyed up for this. They're fighting for every ball, and illegally so at times. And they're having to defend grimly. No one more so than Trucco. Everybody's back. Herrera is there. Might see a shot from him, perhaps. Or Podomo. Francesco Lee in the wall. The Uruguayan player. Herrera. They'll have to do better than that. The Leon. This time, a free kick to Bolivia. We will welcome the respite. The referee surrounded by the Bolivians. Well, this is going to be his problem now, is that, uh, you know, both teams now are going to kind of surround him on every kind of free kick situation hoping that they can persuade him to go their way uh, obviously the Uruguayans are past masters at this type of thing Edwin Romero number 10 for Bolivia is back on his feet and on we go with the free kick for Bolivia again only Meljar was upfield And you can see how much of a hurry Uruguay are in. And they really need a goal to ease their nerves. It's not a game that's going to flow in any way. And the Bolivians hoping to soak up the pressure and then catch out Uruguay on what will be a pretty rare break if they can't manage one. Of course, the prime objective is simply to keep Uruguay out. Nil-nil will be enough. But they'd feel a lot happier, Bolivia, if they can't sneak a goal. I don't think they can rely on Peru achieving a result in the last game. Well, what the Bolivians are doing now is that they, they, uh, they're taking their time at all the, all the dead ball situations, like the throw-ins here hoping that the game will go quiet. Just trying to take the sting, really, out of Uruguay's exactly, attacks. Exactly, yeah. Trying to slow down the pace, slow the momentum. Here's Herrera. The bombardment has certainly died a little in the last few minutes. Without suggesting that Uruguay's command of the game is going in any way. Again, taking their time over the throw, Bolivia. Vargas eventually decides to take it. Half an hour into the first half. 
It's still Uruguay nil, Bolivia nil in Montevideo. And so far, Bolivia will be the happier of the two teams, no doubt. What a major triumph it would be if they can reach the finals in Italy. No one gave them a chance at the start of the group matches. Sosa, it's there, that's the first. And are Uruguay on their way? The celebrations of Sosa suggest that he feels they are. And it's that man, Ruben Sosa, again. He scored in Lima against Peru. He got four in the South American Championships. It was a super diagonal like ball to Sosa there, and he got in the back of the defence. And he controlled it under pressure, lovely, and poked it just inside the far post. Took it really well, but here's the ball, here's a lovely diagonal ball. Got in the back of the defence. It was Martinez who missed his header. Just there, look. And Sosa measured it perfectly. That's a great finish. And he has to be now one of the world's outstanding players, Ruben Sosa. And Uruguay, well, they can breathe a little easier now. They've got a goal. And Bolivia have now got to score one. And that is going to be asking a lot of them in this passionate atmosphere in Montevideo. Incredible noise now around the stadium. Sosa going down. That's right on the edge of the area. And it was definitely outside. The Bolivians complaining. And they mustn't lose their heads now. They've still got a chance. But you'd have to fancy Uruguay now. Well, I mean, that's a very important goal for Uruguay. And uh, it'll put even more pressure on the Bolivian defence. And it, here again is another free kick in it. I mean, this is this one, he, he really is a vulnerable spot. I mean, once you get a free kick in the D, I mean, uh, it can be a power shot. It can be a bender off the wall. I mean, they've got the choice here. Better in the stadium. Crescendo of noise cascading down from the terraces. Francesco Lee is there. Paz is there. It's another real test for the Bolivian defence. Well, they half got it away and eventually over the bar, way, way over the bar. I haven't really been impressed with the free... The, 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 I mean, Francesco Lee in general has, has taken the free kick. I haven't been too impressed with him. And he's tried a direct shot, I think, three times now. I think each time he's, uh, he's hit the wall and, and he's not even hit the top of the wall. He's hit uh, somewhere midway. So, well, they haven't got someone in the side who can... Uh, who is a free kick expert. I don't know, but it doesn't look so at the moment. Apodomo sometimes strikes one from long range. But Francesco Lee has looked a little below par, hasn't he, for his own life Yeah, standards. I mean, he hasn't, in these games, he hasn't shot as much as Paz has. I mean, Paz has been the player. He's been the playmaker, he's played the through balls. Francesco Lee really hasn't got into the games. And, of course, Sosa up front has been absolutely lethal. Uruguay with their tails up now. And you wonder really if the Bolivians can hold them. You can rest assured they'll try. But no lack of character shown from the Bolivians in these group games. Uruguay taking the game to them again. And a throw to Bolivia. Vargas will take. Ostalaza with a throw for Uruguay. Paz, Herrera, loves to come forward. No way through for Francesco Lee. It's Malja from River Plate in Argentina. So he's played in some top matches. But 
they have to score a goal now, Bolivia. Ten minutes to half-time, they trail by a goal to nil. And if that is the final result, then Uruguay will qualify if they can beat Peru in their last game. Ferrufino. Well, they've got some big fellas at the back, but they got caught out on the cross for the goal when Martinez fell to get his header in. There was Sosa. Ferrufino was at full stretch then. Just managed to lunge out a leg. Montano, again, it was a mistimed header. They're doing very well, the Uruguayans. I mean, they're keeping the pressure on all the time. I mean, they're virtually not letting them out of their own half. I mean, uh, and under this type of pressure, you know, it only needs one mistake and there's another goal in the net. Well, the referee has given a goal kick, so Montano presumably didn't make contact. He certainly tried to. Bolivians, of course, really can't afford to concede another one before half-time. They've got to stay in the game, stay in contention. But it's another free kick to Uruguay. Actually, that free kick did avert a lot of danger there, because Sosa made a lovely run from the left, coming in, coming into the centre. If it had gone on the end of that one, I think he'd, he'd only got one more defender to beat, and he was in. It'll be interesting to see if Francis Coley has another go here. Ruben Paz is there too, and Sosa. It's Paz. Shot again, fired well wide. Adobo. I haven't been impressed, really, with their free kick take in the Uruguayans. They don't look as though they've got, you know, a real out-and-out -out expert, someone who gets on all the free kicks. And uh, it looks as though they're passing them around at the moment, hoping to find somebody to hit the target. Romero was fouled. And he's one man who might just get something going for Bolivia. He's a very skillful player. But Uruguay looks so strong at the stage. Dominguez finding Sosa. A roar of anticipation around the stadium whenever Sosa's in possession. Here's Dominguez. Knocked down. Is this the second? It's there, yes. Francesco Lee. 2-0 to Uruguay. Well, pressure always tells in the end, and here again, the left-back, who's also having a super game, Dominguez, he started the thing off on the first attack. Knocked down into the path of Francesco Lee, and that was a real quality finish. Yeah, he placed that away lovely there. A nice pass into the net. He's had time just to size up the situation. Enough time for a player of his class, anyway. And beyond Traco, and it's 2-0 to Uruguay. And I wonder if that is the end of the Bolivian World Cup dream. Of course, whatever happens today, there's still one more match to go. It was a lovely play through by Alza Mendy as well for Francis Coley. It really was a lovely layoff in the back of the Bolivian defence. They've been opened up twice, and Uruguay have taken advantage on both occasions. Dominguez, it was his cross in that paved the way for the goal. He's a good player, Dominguez, Peter. I mean, he's involved. It, this left side of the Uruguayan team is uh, they're exceptional players. Dominguez, Paz, Sosa. Uruguay, of course, one of the world's leading football nations. Past winners of the World Cup, and they will be now extremely hopeful of reaching the finals in Italy next year. 
fairy tale for Bolivia might just be over tonight. Here's Herrera, but you never know in football. And the Bolivians will keep plugging away. And whatever the final outcome, they can take a lot of credit, Bolivia. Everybody felt it would be a foregone conclusion that Uruguay would qualify. Well, maybe they will in the end. But Bolivia have made it extremely hard for them. They've beaten Uruguay in La Paz. And they've given them another awkward game tonight. Although Uruguay have surely taken control now with these two first half goals. Coming as they have in the last quarter of an hour of the first 45 minutes. And they've got a break on here. Easily broken up by, by Gutierrez. Has missing out. Padomo. Another free kick. De Leon is there. Now, what are they going to try this time? Francesco Lee. That will have lifted his confidence, the goal. The Uruguayans on the rampage now, looking for a third goal before half-time. Paz leaving the throw. De Leon might hurl one in. Nope. And a goal kick. And the right decision too. Whatever the crowd may think. They've absolutely played super well the, this first half, Uruguay. I mean, they... I mean, he took them... Uh, I mean, they put a lot of pressure on. It took them a long time to break the, the Bolivian defence down, and a lot of teams would have uh, virtually kind of, after the first 20 minutes, thought, well, it's not going to be our day, but they kept it up and they kept it up, got the first goal, obviously went on and got the second goal. Now the pressure's there against Bolivia all the time. Romero to Villegas. And they're getting swamped, really, getting overrun now. Here's Paz. That wasn't very far away at all. They're combining so well now, the Uruguayans. They're getting in little triangles. They're getting threes and fours around the ball. I mean, they did it on this left side about uh, a minute ago. Now, in, now just, they're, they're doing it down the right side. You know, they're pulling defenders into them. They're playing two or three passes, setting up passes, and then away they go. Alza Mendes, Sosa, and then Paz. Just little triangles, just three and four players getting together. And then one makes the run, and away they go. And the Bolivians, for all their eagerness, just haven't been able to curb the control that Paz and yes. Sosa have had on the game. Well, that's right. I mean, there's a difference in class, Peter, whatever we say about it. And uh, as well as they've worked hard for everything they've got, the Bolivians, and give them a lot of credit for what they've done. And, and they're not out yet. I mean, uh, they're a super fit team. Second half, you know, they'll keep having a go. Gutierrez for Uruguay. We're now into the last minute of the first half. The Leon's long pass. Oster Laza. Oh, they're in trouble again here. Martinez able to relieve it all. But Uruguay will be well satisfied now with the way the first half has gone. Denied for the first half an hour, but then the vital breakthrough. And we're now almost into time added on for stoppages.
That'll be a throw to Bolivia. Just seconds of the first half remaining. No doubt, Jorge Abeja, the coach of Bolivia, will have some comforting words for his players, but it's hard to see at the moment how they can turn this round. Such has been the domination of Uruguay. Fontana. It was always going to be a real battle for Bolivia. And it's proved exactly that. Well, they'll keep fighting. Chaco. <laughs> well, he had the stretch, but he got there. He's a very confident fight. goalkeeper there. I mean, he did a Pat Jennings, uh, came out and took it one hand. Yeah, his judgment was perfect. There is the whistle for half time. And you can tell from the reaction of the crowd that everyone here with the Uruguayan flag is delighted with the way that the first half has finished. 2 0, they lead after a bit of a shaky start. And then Sosa with the first goal. Francesco Lee with the straight onto the attack the picture hasn't changed from the first half now attacking the goal to our right and attacking it with some menace in the first minute of the half the Bolivians have made a couple of substitutions the last throw of the dice really for them as Paz is shaken off the ball for Uruguay they brought on number 19 Peña who is the player we were a little surprised at being left out he scored both goals against Uruguay maybe he's not completely fit and also Sanchez who scored last week against Peru he's now on for the second half number 16 Romero one of the players who's gone off but it's the Bolivian defenders that we're seeing for the moment Ferrofino decision in Uruguay's favour. They lead 2-0. Of Meljar for a corner to Uruguay. Big crowd roaring them on. And while the situation isn't completely comfortable, Certainly on top, Uruguay. And the Bolivians are going to have to be a lot more adventurous in the second half. Montano, I think, is the other player who's gone off for Bolivia. Well, they've started off, I mean, the, the Uruguayans have started off and, and done exactly the right thing. I mean, they're putting the pressure right on again and they're going for the Bolivians. It will be interesting to see how far, how long they keep it going. Well, Pereira has come racing out of his penalty area. And that could have been a little tricky. But it is all very well saying that the uh, Bolivians have got to be adventurous. Uh, they're just not getting the chance. Here's De Leon. So, sir. Taking on Martinez. Down he goes. Sosa just had too much pace, too much guile. And Martinez had to resort to illegal methods to bring him down. What a player, Ruben Sosa. Uh, once, he, once he's on his way and he's, he's, uh, he's prepared to knock the ball past the defender, he's always be prepared to knock the ball beyond the defender, to make the defender have to chase and put his foot in. And obviously, if the timing's not right, he gets the fouls, which he's either going to get through or he's going to get a foul. Here's the free kick. That won't trouble Choco. He was a little unlucky to have conceded two goals. He made some fine saves and looked pretty confident dealing with crosses. But then beaten by two exemplary pieces of finishing from Sosa and Francesco Lee. That's a free kick to Bolivia.
And presumably will look now to a double threat up front of Romalo and Peña. And that was the combination that upset the Uruguay side in the first meeting in La Paz. Well, I think that's quite a good move on the Bolivian side. I mean, at least he gives them two men to hit up front. You know, it, it's getting tight at the back. They haven't got time on the ball at the back. At least they've got two men to aim up there for, rather than just the one man. It's another free kick. Foul on Meljar. Number 16 with the long hair there, that's Edwin Sanchez. And it was he who became the hero of Bolivia when he scored what proved to be the winner against Peru in Lima. Meljar and Sanchez over the ball. took a deflection so a corner to Bolivia and some renewed hope for them of course if they can score we could have quite a match on them Meljar taking the kick Very difficult situation for Bolivia. Of course, if they should let in another one, it will all be over. But they're pressing hard themselves now. It's Borja going down. So the Uruguayans conceding several free kicks at the start of this second half. Sanchez to take the kick. Well, that surely was out of play. It's a corner. It was after a corner, yes. Wasn't the best of free kicks, but he's got a corner anyway. So he can try again. Goalkeeper organising his defensive troops. Meljar with the corner. And Pereira making a safe catch. Much to the approval of the crowd. In well, at least the, the Uruguayan uh, goalkeeper has been brought into action this second half. I think it's the first time we've seen, seen him. He's also got a, a super jersey, Peter. Well, it seems all the fashion now in South America, these jazzy jerseys. South American goalkeepers do tend to be a little eccentric. And Senor Rujas of Chile, of course, is no exception. The infamous incident with the firework. But at the end, may well have cost Chile... Well, I wouldn't say so much a place in the finals, because I think they're on their way out anyway, but it certainly cost them any chance of going on when they were penalised for the behaviour of Rojas and indeed of the rest of the team in refusing to come back and finish off the game against Brazil. Brazil awarded the game. And they are through to the finals, and it's looking now as if Uruguay are strong favourites to join them. But they're not there yet. And who knows, perhaps Peru could cause an upset in the last game. They'll have nothing to lose, certainly. Podomo. Long strike. Easily gathered, though, by Truco. Everybody waiting for the whistle, which didn't come. Herrera. It's a lunging tackle. Very unnecessary from Sanchez and a red card. Well, that seems a little hard. That seems a bit severe, yes, because he, he kind of... He just lost control and he stuck his leg out and caught his feet. I mean, without a doubt, he caught his feet. But I don't think it was a real intentional nasty foul. Well, he's only been on for a few minutes. He's a second-half substitute. And the referee has awarded a red card, and really, surely that's taking it too far. 
I mean, the game is not out of control. It was a bad tackle. Sanchez recognised that, acknowledged it, and the referee has reached for the red card, and Bolivia are down to ten men. The referee was right on the spot. Well, it was a reckless tackle, but I didn't feel... Well, he just threw himself in. Card. I mean, I, I don't think it was... Uh... I mean, he's, he's just come on the pitch, you can, you can bet he's kind of, he wants to impress everybody, he wants to be involved, and all of a sudden he's gone and made a challenge that really he shouldn't have made. And, uh, but I don't think it was an intentionally bad foul. Well, Herrera is being stretched off, so perhaps the injury is more serious than we may have thought at first. But Sanchez... The substitute in the second half, or one of them for Bolivia, has been dismissed, and they have to battle on with only ten men, as if it wasn't difficult enough for them already. Ten minutes into the second half, so Sanchez had been on for less than that time, and he will take no further part in this game. I wouldn't say it's been a dirty match, Peter. I mean, it's, it's, there's been a one or two skirmishes, and... The players have crowded round the referee at times, but in general, the spirit of the game's been OK. It was fairly fierce in the first half an hour, but once Uruguay had scored, they settled a bit. And the heat, perhaps, was taken out of the situation. I mean, it is the goal. World Cup. I mean, it's not, <laughs> it's not just a, a kind of a first division game or something like that. I mean, it's very important to these two nations. Free kick for Bolivia, who will be feeling now it's not their night. It's all going against them, it's all going wrong. Alzamendi, road one tackle. It certainly wasn't uh, the second offence, that's Herrero, who's back on the... He's back on the pitch, yes, now, so... So he's all right. But it wasn't the second offence by Sanchez, it wasn't two bookable offences, that was his first foul. And although it was a bad one, well, our view here in the commentary box anyway, is that it didn't really warrant a red card. But it's the referee's decision that matters, and Bolivia have lost Sanchez. Chaco. And again, Pereira has come right over his area. Perhaps he's bored, he's not enough to do it. He's trying to get involved in the action, but I don't think well, it's... Well, he's, uh, he's uh, I mean, that's the second time this half. I mean, he's uh, it's very adventurous. I mean, he's, I suppose he's, he's, he's trying to sweep behind his back four. But, uh, and he's fly kicking the ball. I mean, he's got to be spot on with those kicks. Paz seeking out Sosa. An almost telepathic understanding between the two. And it's creating so many problems for Bolivia, who are already 2-0 down. And for any latecomers, they're also down to 10 men with Sanchez, one of their substitutes, having been sent off after only 10 minutes of the second half. He came on at half-time. Sosa. Podomo. This is Paz, now Francesco Lee, it's a long way out, but his confidence is clearly higher now than it has been in recent matches, the goal has lifted him. Francesco when they, when they hunt in packs like that and they get together and they play those simple balls and they get one player free, I mean it's, it's really top class football. Well, we've been impressed by Brazil, and you feel too, I think, Don, that if Uruguay do go on to the finals, as looks likely now, that they're going to make an impact, aren't yes, they? Yes, I mean, there are uh, both teams are... Uh, they're going to be a force to reckon with if you're in their group. So, sir, trying to find Paz, then wrestling with Martinez. And he's got a yellow card. 
Not for one horrible moment, he was going to send him off too. I think a yellow card was fair enough there because the defender had made a good tackle and was going to break out with the ball and uh, Sosa grabbed hold of him and brought him down. Some might say that that was as bad as the one for which Sanchez yeah. was sent off in a different way. Well, I suppose it wasn't as violent, was it, so... Now, was that a trip? No, the referee has awarded the goal kick to Uruguay. who will remain in command, in control. Pereira has had a couple of rushes of blunt to the head, seeking his glory. But otherwise, really, the Bolivians still haven't extended Uruguay in any way. And if they are going to score two goals to force a draw from this, well, it's going to be a very positive approach needed from them. And that's difficult to see at this stage. Herrera. Almost fat Sosa. Ferrufino. But he couldn't get away from Francesco Lee. He's a difficult man to mark, really, Sosa, because he doesn't play wide and he doesn't play in the middle. He's kind of midway. So he can go both ways. He can pull wide again if he wants to, or he can go on and, and make a run into the penalty box. Wanted a penalty. The referee didn't. That must have been a tight decision. Well, that was a tight one, yes, because he was dribbling well into the box. I'd like to see that one again. Gutierrez. Little nudge in the penalty area and a free kick to. Bolivia, fouled by Al Zabendi. Let's look again here. Well, well without a yeah. doubt, I mean, that's, that was a pen. I mean, uh, Sosa's done the player. I mean, he's took the ball to his right-hand side with the outside of his right foot, and the defender's gone through virtually with two feet. And the referee deciding it was a fair challenge. De Leon. Now to Paz. Looking for a little space, and Paz, such neat, tight control. Is De Leon. The Uruguayans hoping for a third goal to make absolutely certain of the two points. Paz. De Leon. So so was lurking. It's a poor header, really. The Bolivians pin back again. Here's De Leon. Paz offside. But it's 2 0 to Uruguay. Bolivia still haven't managed a direct shot to trouble Pereira in the Uruguayan goal. Here's Podomo. Now for Dominguez, this is De Leon. Seems to be spending some time in the Bolivian half now. Rosset was looking for Alzamendi. Chaco was equal to it. And Herrera steering it back to Pereira. I think it's going to be one-way traffic now all the way through. It will be interesting to see whether they can get the third or even go on and make more goals, the Uruguayans. They're doing the right thing now because they've got the extra man. They're knocking the ball about. And obviously, as they knock the ball about, they're going to find where the man who's missing, the, the Bolivian who's been sent off, they're going to find the free man. 
Every time the Bolivians threaten to clear the ball into the Uruguayan half, it comes straight back again, really. Vallejas was battling. This is Romalo. Two number nines together. Vargas with the free kick for Bolivia. We've come here with such high hopes. In fact, Montana taking the kick, or Fontana rather. And the decision in favour of Uruguay. Oster Laza to Herrera. Stelaza keeps it in those long diagonal balls. I mean, he made the first goal with that one. Could be something on here. Alcibendi waiting in the middle. This time, no way through. For Ruben Paz. This is Borja. Well, they're persevering, the Bolivians. But it looks to be a pretty hopeless task for them now. Francesco Lee. Little touch off from Alzamendi. Nearly got through then. Ostalaza. Working hard in midfield. Alja for Bolivia. Francesco Lee. Vilayas. Falpo by Ostalaza. And we're going to see a substitution here. Paz is coming off. I suppose approaching a veteran stage now is Ruben Paz. At my word, he's done his bit for Uruguay. This is normal for, for Paz. I mean, he generally does about an hour. Uh, Olsen to get in control of the game, and then off he comes. Ben Kachir, I think, is the player replacing him. And that's the tumultuous reception for Ruben Paz. Great favourite with the Uruguayan crowd. And he's had a super match in Montevideo. Tremendous noise around the stadium. That's the response to the contribution made by Ruben Paz. Been around as Paz, he's played in several different countries. Now in Italy, with Genoa. Thirty years old now, Ruben Paz. Herrera. But Alcimendi. Too close to Trucco. It is indeed Benkacir, who's come on for Ruben Paz. Benkacir, who also came on in the first game between the two. Plays for Seville in Spain. Here he is now. Now for Sosa. Benkacir just nipping in before Meljar. Here's Podomo. I don't think they're too bothered now, the Uruguayans. I think they're just they're playing and obviously they're letting the time go through. You know, they'll make some passing movements every now and again, but their, their general attitude now is that, you know, it's virtually over and done with. Uh, we'll just about enough, do enough to get through. If we get a goal, fine, but if we don't, don't worry. Trucco looked to be difficulties, he's got away with it. <laughs> 
Well, he's very lucky there because his first kick he missed and he did his, he did his standing leg. And then he came out with the ball and decided, well, I might as well have a go. And decides to play a, a long ball down the left wing. They must have seen him coming. You can't miss that yeah. jumper. Anyway, he did get away with it. But here come the Uruguay again with Dominguez to Podomo. Doesn't matter how many Uruguay win by, as long as they win. They'll then be two points behind Bolivia, but with one game to go, that final game against Peru. We've lost all three of their previous games and look to be pretty demoralised. Can't really see Peru doing anything in that one. No, no. Uh, they've got a lot of problems in Peru at the moment. Uh, they're rebuilding their team. Then they're not going to make the next World Cup. It will be interesting to see what kind of attitude they do put into the, to the game when they play Uruguay. Spelljar's through ball then. And they've got a corner. And they really need that Philip that a goal would give them now, Bolivia. Just to give themselves a little bit of a chance. Safe, Pereira. It's the first one he's had to make. Well, that was a super shot. It was a lovely. I mean, it it, uh, it never left the grass, and uh, the keep, the keeper got down very well. Well, that will give Bolivia hope. If that had gone in. Could have been in for a very exciting finish. But as it is, Uruguay are on the break on the rep page with Sosa. But the warning signs were there. And Uruguay will seek now the cushion of a third goal. It's the shot, shot fired through. Spun off the goalkeeper. He made a very good save, he got down well. He wouldn't see much of that shot. I mean, there was such a lot of uh, defenders in front of him and also Bolivian forwards. He wouldn't see it till late. Came through a ruck of players, so good goalkeeping then by Pereira, who obviously hasn't had a great deal to do. But when he has been called on, he's responded to the occasion. Truco has proved no mean performer at the other end either. Shot there from Podomo, flying wide. They've both been very impressive. They both have been prepared to play well off the goal line and come out and sweep up behind the defence. They've both been prepared to come out and catch crosses. Kick upfield by Pereira. Alzamendi. That'll be a Bolivian throw. No free kick to Uruguay. Awarded by the referee. Francesco Lee taking players on. Alzamendi. Whistle's gone. The Uruguayan players looking very unhappy. Well, he's given offside for some unknown reason. I mean, it was a nice one too. Francesco Lee there. Alzamendi. Well, Alzamendi might have been about level two, perhaps foot offside. Difficult to see from that angle, but yes. I think uh, Alzamendi and Francesco Lee were a little unlucky then. What a fine goal that would have been if they'd managed to finish it off. Sosa, I think it was, arriving at the far post, who would surely have completed the job. It stays in at 2-0. Sosa and Francesco Lee in the first half for Uruguay. Borja losing up though to 
Herrera. Just that one moment of anxiety for Pereira. Along with a couple of minor heart fluttering moments earlier in the game. Earlier in the half, really. There's little in the first half to suggest that Bolivia were going to score. Podomo. Herrera, Ostelaza, and he's found Herrera. Trucco pulled out of the middle. No one on the end of the cross. That was a nice move by Uruguay. Started off down the left. Then the play came back and switched to the right. Nice cross. It was, it was uh, if the attitude had been there, I'm sure that uh, someone would have gone the end of it. It's a teasing cross, certainly. They're just about getting through at the moment, the Uruguayans. I think they know they've, they've got this one. Alzamendi to Sosa. Alzamendi again, Benkacir. Alzamendi shot, down goes Trucco. I think he was struggling on the cross a moment or so ago, Trucco, but he does look a very competent goalkeeper. But it's one of those crosses that do tend to put a, a goalkeeper in no man's yes, land. Yes, oh, it definitely eliminated the goalkeeper. The Bolivians, remember, playing with ten men. Edward Sanchez having been sent off. Their young substitute early in the second half. And the Uruguayans deservedly in front. Certainly had most of the play. And rather cruising now with a quarter of an hour to go. It's De Leon. He went in with two legs and he went in low and, and uh, it really was a hard tackle that one. Fontana really made no attempt to play the ball when he played Podobo. I think that one, that one of the two, that one definitely deserves sending off. I mean, that could have been a broken leg. Well, I thought the first one was a headstrong challenge that obviously was an unfair one but really didn't warrant a red card. Maybe that one did. That was a bad tackle. Let's have another look at it. You see as Podomo receives the ball there, there's no attempt to play the ball at all. So, a second Bolivian sent off, their frustration beginning to show now. They've come here believing that the miracle could be on, and for half an hour, well, it was. Once you're acquired, Podomo scored. did quite well, really. I think he just saw it coming at the last minute because he got his one leg off the floor. And if he could have got the other leg off the floor, he'd eroded quite well. I mean, the problem with those tackles is if your feet are on the ground. If they hit while your feet are on the ground, it's a broken leg. Well, Podomo is no saint. He was sent off in the final of the South American Championship in 87. Yeah, it's his right leg, you see. It's the one he, he was standing on. He, he managed to get his left leg off the floor. As you say, he did see it coming, but uh, couldn't completely avoid it. So, Fontana, one of the Bolivian... Defenders has been sent off. They're now down to nine men. And on the coupon, this one will go down now as a home banker. Surely now there's no way that Bolivia can get anything out of this game. There's another substitution to be made. It's Podomo indeed who's going off. This we believe to be Korea to replace him. Thunderous applause again for Podomo, who's a very important player in this Uruguayan side. We yes, he is. He is the anchor man in midfield. He's the, he's the player who plays just in front of the back four. 
and he screens the back four very well and he's still got the ability to come out with the ball every now and again. Perdomo is very important to the Uruguayan uh, tactics. And although he's only in his mid-twenties, he's been on the international scene for quite a while now. He was captain of that South American championship winning side in 87 at the age of 22. And he is going to play a vital role for Uruguay if they do go on to the finals in Italy. And of course another one who's playing now is club football in Italy. Herrera. So as with the Brazilians, Don, again, there's going to be a, a lot of experience in European football for the Uruguayans. Well, that's right. I mean, that's, that's where we talk about the situation where when the World Cup's in Europe, you know, a European team win it. When the World Cup's in South America, a South American team win it. Now, all of a sudden, we've got this situation where a lot of the South Americans are playing in Europe. They have got the experience. And under those circumstances, I think a, a South American team have got a better chance of winning the World Cup here in Europe. It's a free kick to Bolivia, who trail by two goals to nil, and they've had two men receive yellow, uh, red cards in the second half. I mean, it'll virtually be home for home from most of them. I mean, there are, most of these players are playing in Italy these days. Here's the free kick. And it would be quite extraordinary now if the Bolivians do manage to avoid defeat. And that they have to do, remember, to clinch their place in the finals. Otherwise, Uruguay will need then two more points to go on to Italy. And that they will be expecting to do, pick up from the last game against Peru. Banco Chia. This is De Leon. A rather clumsy clearance. Another throw to Uruguay. Who again are camped in the Bolivian half. De Leon. Costa Laza. Here's Herrera. Alzamendi, clever piece of play. Not so, though, from Herrera. Free kick to Bolivia. That will be the Uruguayans problem now. I mean, they're going to have so many kind of extra players around it is that they can get casual. You know, and everybody else thinks, well, he's going to do it, I'm not going to do it, he's going to do it, he's spare, let him do it. It's almost a stroll for them yeah. now. Ostalaza exploiting the space that he's obviously allowed now with Bolivia having lost two players in the second half. Well, the contest really was over at half-time. Two first-half goals for Uruguay. Sosa and Francesco Lee. Benkocia. The crowd, I think, will be a bit disappointed, Don, that they haven't got. Yes, I think they ball. will now because I think that they, they they'll be expecting the Uruguayans to, uh, especially with only nine nine Bolivians on the pitch, to go forward and get extra goals. And there'll be a few exhausted Bolivians out there. It was hard enough with eleven. Mind having said that, I mean, it, there's lots and lots of times here in England where you get this situation where a team have a man sent off or get down to ten men, and all of a sudden they go and they win the game. You know, everybody seems to lift himself. Every one of the ten players that are left on the pitch seems to give a little bit more, make up for the player that's missing, and all of a sudden they get a result. The times that's happened. I think perhaps, though, the difference here was that they were 2-0 down when it, oh, yes. had it been at 0-0, yes, you'd have thought over, maybe yeah. that would have been the case, but I would think a few heads dropped when they saw Sanchez sent off. Already 2-0 down. 
then you know the fight's going to be that bit harder. And it certainly has proved you that. You see, the free men, the free men in the Uruguayan team, obviously, are going to be the back men. So it's up to the back men, really, to come through and use their freedom and uh, get into forward and midfield situations to make extra men and make two against one and three against two situations and then get in. It's a free kick to Uruguay. And they will feel they have one foot now in the finals in Italy next year. See, these are the people who've got the freedom here at the be. back. Yeah. You see, I mean, there's, there's hardly any Uruguayans got anybody to mark. Dominguez is going, the left back's going quite often. Sosa here has gone back to fetch the ball. Just look at the room they have now. Ostalaza. Herrera has made the break outside him. Five minutes of the match remaining. Borja for Bolivia. That's a dreadful pass. It's looking good for Uruguay now. De Leon. As he found Sosa. He's just kept it in play. Elza Mendy's on the edge of the area. Still Sosa. Now Elza Mendy. No way past. Francesco Lee. And Trucco quickly out to avert the danger. That's an interesting thing what Trucco did there. He ran round the box with his ball, touching it with one hand. It would be interesting that, because he must have taken well past four steps. Quite an extrovert. But they've beaten him twice, and that is looking as if it's going to be enough. It is all the time, watch. If you, if you can wear a jersey like that, Don, you can get away with anything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think that's why he's good in goal. He's an ex-rugby player, Peter. <laughs> I shall remember him. And he certainly hasn't let Bolivia down. There's no question that uh, he was to blame in any way for the two goals. Just superb finishing and well created moves, too. Now the crowd are urging Uruguay on. They want one goal or more. The game rather petering it out, petering out uh, rather aimlessly now. Uruguay are surely going to win. Well, the Uruguayans have just stopped getting the ball in the box. I mean, they open the game out, and they open this second half out, getting the ball forward and getting it in the box. Sosa. Now, can he set something up here? Glorious skill. And over the bar. Trucco furiously protesting to the linesman. Well, that's what we're talking about, you see there. I mean, the, that attack meant something. It, it, it had an end product. It was going into the box. Well, because they've been taking the easy options and, and they've got the extra men, they've been playing kind of in front of the Bolivian defenders and, and getting nowhere. Not that extra... A little bit of urgency, failed to produce a goal. As the match now nears its conclusion. But the Bolivian defence having to backpedal again. Francesco Lee. Herrera. Just a couple of minutes to go now. Throw to Bolivia. One last throw of the dice, perhaps. 
but it really is looking beyond them now. Osterlaza. And it's all too easy for them now. Bolivia with nine men, unable to master a real threat. Under pressure in the first half, conceding two goals. And then in the second half, their hopes really evaporated with the dismissal of two players. Corner to Uruguay in the dying seconds of the game. And the Bolivians looking rather dejected now, as you'd expect. I think of all the, of all the South American teams we've seen over the last few weeks, Peter, I, I, I mean, obviously, Brazil and Uruguay are the best two teams. So it, it's only right that those two teams come to the World Cup. Yes, so, sir. Scored once already, is that his second? Oh, splendid save. <laughs> Trucco, who dribbles it out with his hands again. That was a great save. Sosa onto his right foot this time, showing that he's just as deadly with that. The shot got through. And down goes Trucco. When Argentina are already there, I mean, they've uh, already qualified. Uh, so I think we're going to get the best of the South American football. Now this fellow, Sosa, is definitely one to look out for. Uh, he's top class. He really is a top class player. He makes good runs. When he collects the ball, he has the ability to dribble past defenders, create openings for other players. Several of the Brazilians have impressed me, but I think so, sir. I've admired as much as anyone. Yes. Really has been outstanding. Free kick to Bolivia. We're now into injury time. One or two delays in the second half, but it won't be long now before we hear the final whistle which will acknowledge a win for Uruguay. I think I'm safe in saying that, although Bolivia have got another free kick. Borja. He's gone on here, Borja, down he goes, right on the edge of the area. Another couple of feet, and that would have been a penalty. Almost two minutes now of injury time in the second half. This World Cup qualifying game in Montevideo. Down goes. Nice change of direction up. there by the Bolivian player. Probably check inside. Peña is there. We haven't seen too much of him in the second half. He's had few opportunities to shine since coming on as a second-half substitute. They ought to put players on top of the keeper. There's a defender on the line. Headed away. The referee has had a look at the watch. Meljar doesn't appear to be in too much hurry. So I think the Bolivians have conceded defeat now. Bonjour, but there is the final whistle. Enormous cheers around the stadium. And no doubt at all that Uruguay are deserved winners of this game by two goals to nil. The damage created in the first half with the goals from Sosa and Francesco Lee. And Bolivia's cause, well, it really fell apart in the second half when they lost two players sent off by the referee. Sanchez, the substitute, that I felt a little harsh. But then the second dismissal of Fontana, and it was all over then for Bolivia, who nonetheless have put up a valiant show in this World Cup group. 2-0 the final score tonight, and it means that Uruguay have to win their last game, and that will be in Montevideo against Peru, and if they do so, they, and not Bolivia, will go on to the World Cup finals in Italy next year. And certainly on what we've seen of the matches in this group so far, Uruguay will be firm favourites to win that line.